at PRGE, Ian. We spoke about the Internet Archive, adding 2,500 more DOS games to their playable database. We all love DOS games. And you get to hear Pat talk about his childhood story about Donkey uh, on DOS. So we're going to transfer to that talk now. The good old Internet Archive, Ian. Hard at work, archiving our, our, our digital lives. They've just added 2,500 more DOS games to their playable database. What's that take it up to? I don't know. Let's find out. They had 2,400 from 2015, so I guess that brings it closer to 5,000. So that's th incredible. That's absurd, but it's great to see it all up there, especially um, easily accessible in one spot. And you can play them through whatever the browser. Um, that's great, because uh, a lot of times, you know, a DOS box is hard to configure. So if they pre-configure it in the browser for each individual game, that's 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 like most of the work done for you at that point. Um, and, and the big thing about <coughs> about DOS games is that some of these are so archaic and weird. Let's go to the actual uh, announcement here. Um, like some of these, you'll never uh, you'll never see or have heard of again for some of these. Uh, let's see, IBM DOS version of Adventure called Microsoft Adventure. A small rebranding of the original start of the text adventure world, Colossal Cave, or Ave I didn't know there was a version of that. How would you, like, where would you come across that ever again? Something like that, you know what I mean? Like, this is, this is really weird stuff that, this, a lot of this stuff's not gonna be for sale ever again. You're not gonna find it in collections, you know, like, like official re-releases. So some of this, you know, you have to archive some of this. Um, this isn't like uh, people, you know, selling a bunch of Super Nintendo ROMs and putting it in your Super Nintendo Classic. No, that, most of those games are readily available. You can find them, you can buy them in some form, you can buy them here. Uh, these are games you cannot. Uh, Super Muntrous, the challenge continues. All right, here you go. Uh, 1983, Digger. I played this as a kid on, my dad had a, you know, the five and the quarters he'd bring home from work. This is a game that, it's a, like, kind of like a Dig Dunk clone, but it's like original. Mm -hmm. And that's a game that I'm sure, who actually heard of this game before with its CGA graphics? Three people, four, I'm surprised. But, but the point is that um, if you don't archive stuff like this, like, I'm not even sure I could, could find this, like a re, an official version of this. No, probably not. I mean, and that's what I mean about DOS games being in their sort of weird space outside of other game collecting and preservation. Uh, like, we were up in the, in the past about the DOS preservation project, trying to, trying to archive not just every DOS game, but every DOS utility program and things like that. And they still, they have a list of ones they haven't even found to dump, that they know exist, but they can't find them. So this is fantastic. I mean, I, I should spend a weekend. I should just become a, a, you know, a Twitch streamer of these games and do that. That would be fantastic to do that. So a, a DOS game, there was one DOS game that for like a month of my life when I was about six or seven, I wanted to be a truck driver. What, what? <laughs> yeah. Um, the open so, road, Ian. So, so uh, my, uh, my dad and I would browse the local BBSs uh, for... Um, Games to download, shareware. Oh. You know, you'd sit there and you'd wait two hours to get onto the BBS, and then you would go through the archives and see all the games, and then you would wait, you know, eight years to download something. That was like 10 kilobytes. And there was a game called Big Rigs. And I was like, boy, that sounds good. I don't know why. I, I was never interested in trucks as a kid, but I wanted to play Big Rigs. So my dad downloaded it, and it took forever. And it was a horrible text adventure trucking game. <laughs> well... That sounds oddly familiar. But I really, like, it was one of those things where, you know how, like, you get something for Christmas and it might not have been what you wanted or a gift for your birthday, but you play what you have when you're a kid. So I tried to make the best of this truck driving game and got really into it. I learned about, like, retreads and, you know, the difference between buying some retreaded tires or some fresh tires. Anyway, was DOS, it, DOS gaming is really important. Was it like the text version of the Lemonade game? Like, but for sort of. It was like, do you rigs? want to keep driving in a straight line? Yes, let's keep driving. Do you want to keep driving some more? I do want to keep driving some more. Do you want to stop at the rest stop? I'd prefer to just keep on trucking. So... Yeah, it was fantastic. Anyways, I didn't okay. become a truck driver. I'm doing this with you. Did it include any of those the CD uh, truck stop little adventures? I'm, I'm just here with you. Okay. Trucking well, along. A little more famously than that is um, the early um, donkey game 
So what? there was a game called Donkey. So oh, my, yeah. on the disc that my dad would pirate, sorry, dad, I'm, the FBI is going to come and get you, that has some of these games on it. It had like a digger. It had a clone of Cuber called Jaybird. They want to hear that one? It literally changed around all the sprites. Uh, there was a game called Donkey. It was a basic game. You had to load up basic to play yeah. it. So I'm excited because I'm five years old. This is Donkey Kong. You load it up. It's a um, overhead racer game. You have a car. You hit left or right, go back and forth. And the object is not to hit donkeys in the road. You hit a donkey, the donkey explodes. And I was famously coded by Bill Gates. Like back in like 1980 or so. You know, like an early DOS thing he coded. But that was donkey. It's a real bait and switch. It was a bait and switch when you're five and it's free. You got to learn how to read, <laughs> how to load up in, in basic, because my dad wasn't going to do it, you know. Uh, it, you know, it was interesting. So the, the world of DOS games is incredible. Um, and we're not even getting to, like, the CD-ROM era, you know. We're not getting to, like, the, that weird area in, the, like, the late 80s, or early 90s when consoles didn't come close to the computer in terms of not just how games looked and felt, but, like, the variety of genres they could do. Like, they couldn't do platformers, but they could do adventure games better, and do strategy games better, and do simulations better. So there's a lot of jewels out there and gems that um, you can get lost in it. So yeah, check, I guess check out the Internet Archive, you know, before, before someone shuts them down. Like, but I guess no one's going after them for this stuff. Because like, a lot of this stuff is, you know, I, that, that weird term, abandonware, when no one's thought about these games for like decades, you know. I should buy the rights to Digger, I think I should do that. Get donkey rights from Bill Gates. I Get donkey that. rights from Bill Gates sounds extremely shady. Like, that could be any number of things going on. Donkey rights, that's our code yeah. word for that? Yeah, I got his donkey rights in my back pocket. Whoa, okay. Make sure it stays there. And we are back. Convoy. Convoy, that's right. Move them out. Donkey and convoy <laughs> talk. <laughs> I hope Big you rig. enjoyed that. Uh, did I tell you that someone found Big Rig? Yes, they found it online. They, they found it online for me because their kid wanted to play it for some reason after. Go out and find Donkey. Play Donkey. <laughs> our friend, Bill our Gates friend John. 